Hello everyone, Tony from Bikeberry here. I just got in a stage four engine kit. We're gonna mount it right on our Switz Cruise bicycle. Let's go. So the first step when you receive your new engine is we have to assemble the whole top end. Now you can see that there's two gaskets here. Uh, we got some washers, lock washers, and you can see that your piston is inside there, right? We got our high compression head. We need to get all this together so that it's really solid and reliable and everything's put together the right way. Then we can mount it on the bike. So let's dive in. So before we start bolting everything together, I want you to notice that at the base here, there is two gaskets. We want to leave both of those in there so that we get the right height for our cylinder, okay? Then a question that we get asked a lot is, what direction should the arrow be pointing? So as you notice on the back of the engine, we have our intake side. On the front of the engine, we have our exhaust side. So where that arrow usually points is an intended to point is out the exhaust side. But sometimes they get marked wrong. One slips by and gets stamped wrong. We try our very best to make sure everything is correct, but one slips by every once in a while. I pulled this from my stock of spare engine parts, and lo and behold, this is just one of those examples. But you can see that in this case, see where that pin is? And then over here, the pin? That actually is the intake side. So you need to check. And here's a good way. I would ignore the arrows. And if you see way down in there, those bumps, that's where the pins go for your rings. So let's see why that matters, where those uh, pins are located. Now, if we look in our intake side right here, it's right in the center of the housing. If we look at our exhaust side, it's offset in the housing, okay? And if you see our rings in there, we don't see any pins. If this is flipped around with those pins on the exhaust side, then that would leave a gap in that ring and that would wreck that ring, okay? So don't rely on the arrow, let's rely on where the pins are, and then you'll get it right. So now that you know it, we're gonna look where these pins are located, there and there, and they are on our intake side, okay? So in, we know that this one is correct. So what we'll do next is we'll remove the nuts and the washers, we'll get our piston connected properly right here, and then we'll get our cylinder bolted up nice and tight. Quick double check, make sure those pins are on the intake side. Yep, they are. See that? Double check that there's the two gaskets. And let's just slide this straight down onto those bolts. Kinda gotta wiggle it back and forth. Now that everything's lined up, you wanna take your bearing, along with your wrist pin. We're gonna put the bearing right in there. Then we'll push our piston down to line up with that bearing. Without pushing the rings too far out of the cylinder body. We're getting really close to lining up. You can see right through that hole. So we're gonna take our pin here. We're gonna push right into that, through that bearing. If you notice on the other side, the clip is already in there, so you won't be able to push it out. To work it in there, I like to take an Allen key and kind of wiggle it back and forth. That way you can start to push it in there. See, now it's gonna go right in. Then you wanna be able to push it in all the way. You can use something like this uh, socket driver because it's pretty safe and rounded. Till it goes in all the way. Yep, it's in far enough that you can see the groove right there to put our clip in. And it's touching on that side. Cool, huh? 
So when you unbox your engine, you'll notice that there's a little red bag right here in the stock cylinder head. That is, is your clips. So let's take one of those clips, minus the plastic junk, right? <laughs> Get some needle nose pliers, and you gotta wrestle that thing in there, okay? Right in there. You can see the part that I grabbed with the pliers is in the groove, in that slot. But if you look over here, this isn't. We gotta push that in. Just like that. So before we slide this down there all the way, let's do a quick inspection. We have both gaskets on here. We have our clips on both sides, seated in there properly. We have, now again, don't always trust the arrow, but we have it pointing to the exhaust side. So that means that those pins for our rings are on this side, okay? Uh, next, what we'll do is we'll slide it on down there and bolt on the head. So next, we have our copper gasket and we have our high compression head. So this is a machined aluminum head. The best thing about these is everything is really, really flat. All the surfaces are really flat compared to a lot of the stock heads. They're fine. Uh, I've ran them well too, but they tend to not be as flat. They have some pitting and stuff because they're a cast piece versus being a machine piece. So get you a high compression head. It'll treat you well. Put it on with your gasket. Let's go. All right, stop right there. As you just saw, I was wrestling with that because these are kind of all this way, okay, these studs. So you got to kind of push them in because you don't want to damage this thing, right? But you got to kind of work it. All right, resume. Because of the height of this head, these are hard to get in there. So that's where you got to use the needle nose pliers. Everything's all lined up. It looks good as it should be. The next thing we gotta do is tighten it down properly. Now, if you have a torque wrench, it's about 10, 11 pounds per nut on there, but we'll just get it tight because just like everybody, socket wrench, you're good to go. I'll show you how to do it. So you're gonna get it good and tight like that. And I would go opposite. tight like that like that one like that so now we're going to go in and tighten everything a little bit at a time so that's round one again i'm going opposite So I'm confident that everything's really tight and nice on here. But as a final step, after I mount it to the bicycle, then I'll go in and tighten this down one more time to make sure everything is good and snug. As you can see, this is all we'll need to mount our engine to our Switz Cruise bicycle. The great thing about our Switz Cruise bike is all of the spacing in here is optimized for the spacing on the engine. It all fits as should. So we shouldn't need any spacers. Unlike my Schwinn frame, I had to use spacers in here to get everything to fit properly, which is something we'll go over in future videos on how to do that. Let's start by mounting our plate directly to the front of the engine. We'll add washers, lock washers, and these nuts. Then on the back side, we're gonna take this piece and slide on there like that. 
So now we have our front plate mounted and we have our rear bracket mounted. We're gonna go directly onto the frame. And you'll see that our Switz Cruise frame has all the right spacing in it. It's awesome. The thing that's really important back here is to make sure that is perfectly flat in line with the seat post. See how lined up everything is? Here, there is no gaps. It's all flat, and this is flat against there. It has to be that way. That way it won't break anything. Everything is perfectly in line. Put our plate in here first. Washers. Lock washer. It's better to do one side starting out. Then it'll hold it on there while you do the other side. Next, we put in our front U-bolt. So this is where your skills come in. So on the rear U-bolt, it's gonna be a little long, okay? If you check it out, it's gonna go up and it's gonna hit the casing of the engine, okay? So we're gonna do something about that. So if you break this up into thirds, put in the middle here, into thirds, you're gonna cut off about a third of the bolt. So of course that messes up the threads. So now we gotta go in and fix the threads. Now, one thing I probably should've done is put a nut on here to then un undo and then it would help fix the threads, but it's no big deal. That's what we have sanders for. So when you're sanding it, you always do like a 45 degree angle to it. Cause then it was getting the middle again here. See, screws right on. Nice. So now we'll put on the back of the bracket. See how much clearance there is now? So remember how I said to tighten the head? After we get it mounted on the bike, we're gonna do that right now. So I'm really gonna hold the bike frame and I'm just gonna get it snug like that. I'll do it again. And again, like that, it's pretty good. Then again, that's around 10 to 11 pounds of pressure. So I feel really confident about that. All right, as we finish up here, I'm sure that you've noticed that I haven't doubled up the nuts, added lock nuts, or really changed any of the hardware, just using the stuff that came with the engine. The reason is, is because as you set everything up and go to the next steps of installing your rear wheel, and your chain tensioner, your chain and all that, I may have to move some of this stuff. So I'm not gonna add any of the reinforcements until I'm satisfied. The position of everything is exactly where it needs to go. That's really, really important. As you can see, the Switz Cruise bike is made perfect for the spacing of these engines. Like this was a lot easier than it was on my uh, Schwinn frame. So. I highly recommend getting this over that. Now, again, the focus was just getting it mounted on here, getting a proper positioning. We'll go in later and we'll add all the lock nuts and beef all that stuff up. So don't worry about it right now. You're just concerned about getting everything positioned. Now, the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the rear wheel and we're gonna add the chain tensioner, get the chain on there. Everything's gonna be lined up really well it'll be amazing. You're going to love it. So I have really unique ways that I go about that. Uh, please like and subscribe. This You're not going to want to miss it. We're going to keep going with this and you're going to see every part in super detail on how you should go about building your motorized bike. So uh, comment below if you have one of these frames and you were blown away by how easy it was to mount your engine. So thank you for watching. Thank you for spending the time with us. Please go in and join our Facebook group. 
that's where we're all at and that's where we're helping each other out there's links below to the bike and this engine kit and everything and all the parts will come with it it's amazing uh, i'm excited to get this one rolling pretty soon so i know we've done a lot of content up till now uh, but i really wanted to go into detail for you so let's roll mm -hmm. 